Hey, what's poppin'? You already know, man. Check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Gemini Scorpio podcast is underway. Episode twenty-seven via, via Zoom because y'all they want to be in Houston. I Live my best Zoom. life. It was my bestie's birthday, so I had to come see her because she moved and she's dolo. So I came to come see my friend in Houston for her birthday. Social distance, like still though. Yeah. Or you ain't social distancing. Yes, I have. We it's just me and Ashley. We ain't with nobody. First of all, you went to the airport. That ain't social distancing. You go to the grocery store. That ain't social distancing. I never said I wasn't. I don't social distance. I'm saying you're not. I'm not talking about me. No, but when you go to the grocery store, you still say you're social distancing. I never said I was. I never anyway, did. Excuse me. The mat. The the airport is very much following social distancing rules. Everything is six feet apart. You have to wear your mask the whole entire time. Nobody sits in a row with you. I sat in a whole row by myself, not near anyone. Nobody was more than 10 feet near me at any time unless I was showing my ticket. He was six feet, and they have glasses everywhere. So, you know, I wash my hands as I'm supposed to, hand sanitizer. I have my mask on. I bang, you know. And, you know, I'm building my immune system every day except for when I'm drinking wine. So, good job. Good job. Everybody is everybody in the me. building. He misses me. That's really the real issue. Yeah, I miss you, baby. Everybody's in the building. Alex is here. Uh, Jewel is in the building. Say hi, y'all. They can't see y'all. Yes, sir. Hi, Hello. everybody. What up, what up? Mo, Alex, here. Everybody is here in attendance. How was everybody week? Shall they? What was your week like? How, what was going um, on? you know. It's really annoying because, you know, I got one Gemini down and I still got two more Geminis to go. So I am in full birthday mode for all my Geminis in my life, which is fucking crazy. Like, I don't even like y'all. So it's just like, you know, but, you know, so it's been a week of just prepping and you know, getting ready to see my friends and my boyfriend's birthday is next week. This Gemini here. So I just been busy. That's what it's been busy. Gang, 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 gang. What about everybody else? How was your week? My week was pretty good. It was nice and productive. I had a lot of good things going this week. Just jumping back into the workflow, keeping things going, working on a business. Yeah. I need to get my ass in the gym. No bullshit. Um, <laughs> but yeah. This wave good. right now, you know, ain't gonna lie. I really lost this double chin I was complaining about, and I'm feeling good, okay? Because my double chin was getting real Miss Pig. And it was, you know, but I'm feeling bike. Gym, gym is what it is. Right. Well, not the gym, but working out because the gyms are closed. But you looking good. Yeah, that's, what looking good. that's what I meant, y'all day. But you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. So my week was pretty cool. I started making shampoo, so be on the lookout for that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, wash my hair too. I wash my shit like every day. Yeah, and it's all natural aloe vera shampoo, so everybody can use it. Wait, what was that all natural pussy stuff you were selling? Okay. What? So hold on, Jay. Wait on it because you got some coming. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got some coming. Don't worry about it. But no, it's a um my friend, she makes all natural. It's her line is called <laughs> Womb Therapy Indeed. Um, but it's all natural products that they all have different unique um um places and helping the womb. So yeah. Shout out to Monique for putting me on an order of mines for me. Appreciate yeah, we still it. waiting on ours. It's coming. Yes. <laughs> also, I did get a, I know that we're about to go a little left. I did get a vaginal steam. Oh. This oh, week. Oh, we turn up! <laughs> you know, in preparation of Monique delivering my products. You know, oh, it's birthday yeah. next week and I'm oh. trying to have a baby. Hey, wow. so. It's going to work. <laughs> Look at Jay's face. <laughs> Monique's so laughing. <laughs> so, you know, I happen to be ovulating on Jay's birthday. So, I mean, I am, but it was a joke. Um, so, um, so, yes, that a better than it seems. I do want to shout out to all in by one. Jessica Jordy is doing vaginal steam. She's also a braider, a throw braider, all in one by Jessica. Shout out to her. You know, I also got to host a steam. I did a, actually my first group steam. It was actually my first steam. But my first group steam, she let me host it. I met some <gasps> wonderful That's ladies. Lit. We shared a lot of stories of just feminism and 
you know, all around the woman body and, you know, the struggles women go through as they're getting older. So it was definitely a cool process. So, you know, we did, to, you know, it was cool. Like, it was almost like a, a girl meditation powwow getting your veg steam thing. Mm -hmm. I actually liked it. So, you know, that was different. Definitely cool. Yeah. So, and no, our boxes are not showing. We're fully covered. We're just in our little pots on our little wide skirt things that cover the pots and we just talk and all the good it, bad it, stuff coming out like african culture like doula so it was really nice i like that really nice yes. shout out to all but um I, yes and i went out uh, <laughs> do we have to talk about your pussy on the, the you can't even you can't <laughs> forget about the man <laughs> should have like so what is, what's up with that pussy product i was asking about a product i wasn't talking about your pussy I wasn't talking about my pussy either. I said a vaginal steam. It's a product thing. Like, it's a pot. Yeah, we need those. She do those too. Yeah. There we go. For real. But um, I did show face a little bit um, last night. I went downtown. Um, I, it wasn't really, like, you saw people in their cars with, um, you saw people in their cars with signs and they were honking. You saw a lot of secret service, um, Homeland Security, stuff like that. Um, I didn't get to see no crazy stuff because I'm not with that. So <laughs> I just was liking the art. And Did anybody else get their uh, protesting, looting on? Anybody break into any uh, Walmarts or like uh, Targets to steal any big screen TVs? Anybody get any Rolexes? But if people are selling them, I'm, I'm buying. So yeah. let me know what you got. So nobody else got their protest on? No. Mm -mm. Shit, I we didn't get to go to Xbox or Dior or, or Gucci. If y'all selling Louis bags for fifty dollars, ain't nobody selling no damn Louis bag for no fifty dollars. They just put them on Claire store. Up. They just some people just need the cash. They got it for free. Why not? I need a quick little fifty dollars. Here you go. Man, wallet. Louis then wallet. They, then they tear. Then they break into like the Montclair store in DC. Yep. Last night. Yeah, damn. What, what, like, where did group text for this for this shit that's going on? Like, I don't know. Right. But we, Yo, we gotta get on the group. <laughs> Montclair. Oh. Next. BSI, six p.m. <laughs> but nah, man. I'm so sorry. Can we go? Let's get straight into it, man. It's, uh, so you know, George Floyd passed away a few days ago. Well, he's actually murdered by a police officer and a few police officers. Um, the cop had his knee on his neck for like nine minutes straight. I don't have um. I don't have the story up, but we all know what happened. Uh, somebody, a bystander, told the police officer to get him off, get your knee off his neck several times. Multiple people told him get it, get his knee off his neck several times, and he held his knee on his neck for nine minutes straight until he died. Um, even when the the, the ambulance came, it was no EMTs. I think he was picked up by the police officers. Like that's weird because usually when you picked up or something like that happened, you get medical treatment right then and there. No medical treatment was done. They police picked him up, put him on a uh, stretcher, and put him in an ambulance, I guess. Like, And they're not releasing the body cams because they're saying that it's an ongoing investigation because that's going to tell us everything, honestly. If they're saying that he was resisting arrest from the, from the angles we saw, we ain't see no resisting arrest nowhere. But for some reason, they're not trying to release the body cams. Um, the officer, what was his name, Alex? Derek Chauvin. Derek was um, picked up. Chauvin. Chauvin was charged, right? What was he charged with? So he, so he was charged with third degree murder and manslaughter, which if you know anything about the degrees, which is basically saying it was accidental, it was by mistake. First degree would be pre premeditated um, and on purpose. Uh, second degree would be not on, not premeditated, but on purpose. And third degree is actually saying that it was an accidental murder and manslaughter, which is up to, I think, maximum 25 years in prison. So basically they own some bullshit um, because it definitely, would, definitely was on purpose um, because you held your knee on somebody's neck for nine minutes. Can, question, can anybody um, on this chat hold their breath for nine minutes? No. Uh, nope. I don't know. But I'm coming through air, like yeah, I was just even checking. when you swim, you gotta and come back down. Like I was just checking. Um, yeah. yeah. So the George Floyd killing has sparked up a bunch of rides around the country. Um, it's nothing new. I feel like we've been seeing this since 
in our generation, we've been saying this since 1991. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I don't know what to say. So I've been seeing a lot of people talk about um, they're upset that we're looting. And what I would say is I really don't have, I, I'm, I'm really going to kill a, kill a mic stance. I don't really have nothing positive to say. I, I did a few, few tweets in a day, but as far as looting, I just feel like you can't really, you can't tell somebody how to grieve, right? Like you can't like, granted, what I will say is protect your home. You know what I'm saying? Protect your community, protect your family, protect yourselves. Outside of that, I'm not really doing too much saying anything. Like I'm not about to tell people what to do, what not to do, because man, we've been going through this forever. Like we, as, as the African-American culture, man, we didn't watch, like our ancestors had to, had to watch their wives get raped. You know what I'm saying? Our ancestors had to get killed for trying to protect their, protect, protect their women during slavery. Even after that, like we didn't watch, we didn't see this shit on camera many times. Uh, like this ain't nothing new. So to say that we shouldn't be looting, it's Martin Luther King said we should fight with peace. Malcolm X said we should, we should fight back. You know what I'm saying? So like this is not nothing new. Like we've been going through this shit since ages and ages and ages. So at this point, it's like I don't know what the fuck to say. I don't have no advice. All I was, my only advice is to be safe. Protect your home and protect your family. Outside of that, if motherfuckers want to tear these fucking companies down, by all means, I'm not gonna be out there. But if, I'm not about to tell somebody that they're wrong because, man, this shit is ridiculous. Like it's like it's ridiculous. Like everybody keeps saying, "Don't do this, don't do that," but they've been saying this for years, like since like fucking decades. They've been telling us what not to do. Vote, do this, do that. This shit ain't been working at this point. Honestly, to keep it a hundred. I'm almost at the point where, though, I'd rather go back to segregation. Like, let's live together. Like, because clearly these motherfuckers, these, these white people can't live without, they can't live with us. They can't share the country with us. They can't share the world with us without being intimidated and trying to kill us. So at this point, it's like, yo, let's just have some shit that we can call our own and we stick together. Because clearly this equal shit ain't equal. This shit ain't working. So it's like, yo, like they don't love us. That's love. The least we can do, or we, we can do, is love each other. So like, that's just my take on it. I, it's so much more to go into, but the shit is. Fr I've been watching this shit all fucking week, and this shit is so frustrating. Like that we can't do nothing. There's nothing we can do. So when I see people out there in the streets outraged, what the fuck am I gonna say? I don't have no positive words to say. Like, period. Like, I don't know. Like this shit is pissing me the fuck off. Um. Well, first, R.I.P. George, R.I.P. all our people that we lose to police brutality, um, which, like Jay said, is nothing new. Um, so, you know, my stance on it really is, you know, me personally, again, um, I'm not one of those people also that's not going to tell anybody what to do. Um, I definitely think with things like this, you know, do something until you get better knowledge to do something better. And that's just, you know and rioting is a form of protesting and you know look you know and at this and it's at a point where like you know people are tired and like jay said you can't tell people how to grieve um do i believe in the looting and stuff personally no but i because i'm for the reasoning behind it burn that bitch down like i i can't tell nobody not to do it. I can't tell nobody, you know, I could give my thoughts on it. You know what I mean? Um, you know, but I also think that people's, like, again, people's traumas and the things they've been through and the things that our ancestors have been through, their parents have been through, that being your neighbor, your brother, potentially being you, it is really hard to find, you know, logics behind it and these things, you know, um, but the only thing you know, I stand firm on and I've been standing firm on is just faith in God. Like, I'm not trying to do out anything outside of what God would want me to do personally. Um, so like, yeah, looting to me, like, I just don't want to do that. Like, you know what I mean? I like, I personally don't want to be out in the street. Like, I don't think it's safe, you know, me personally, but the people who are out there, like I give y'all so much respect and I do pray that you guys are safe and continue with a protest. You know, ideally me, I would say peacefully, you know what I mean? But again, I'm not telling anybody how they should deal with what's been going on with our people. Like, you know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, do what you do, do something until you know what's better. I do encourage everybody to, you know, use their knowledge to seek things to do. 
use their knowledge to seek things to do better things that can be more impactful outside of, you know, writing, you know what I mean? And I'm not, I'm not saying that writing is not impactful, but we've been writing for a long time and there's been numerous instances where it hasn't done a thing. Like, you know what I mean? Rodney King didn't change a thing. Like that, they write it, the, the reporter who reported it won a Nobel Prize and nothing changed. <laughs> like, congrats. Like, you know what I mean? So these things to me, like, it's like, I get it. Release, you know, if you need to release and you need to get your voices heard this way, but we have to find another way. Um, and I'm, and, you know, we'll get into, you know, what's and how's or things that I think or you think, you know, could help. But again, I'm not going to tell people to stop writing. Yo, I not think I'm not going to tell them to stop protesting. I'm not going to say that, you know, I'm going to just always say, lean on what your spirit is telling you to do. And if that's what your spirit is telling you to do, you go do that. Yo, I really think that uh, it's crazy because I never really said this and I never really thought about this, but I think that it might be just best for us to be segregated. You know what I'm saying? Because this is clear that we, like, this has been happening just before our time, before Rodney King. Like, this hasn't been, this, is, this isn't like this is a new fight. This isn't like, like this. Like, and they say that this has been happening, we just starting to see it because we got camera phones. Even doing Rodney King in 1991, we were seeing it. And, and the, yeah. fact that, the fact that those police officers, yeah, they got convicted after the, the first, at the, at the second trial, but the first trial, they got off free. In 1992, that's why the riots happened. And I, I keep saying, what's going to happen if that happens again? Then what? I just feel like I'm not. I'm not shocked. It, like I'm, I'm just me personally. I'm at a space where like we've been through some. I'm not surprised at white America. I'm not surprised at the cops, aka the KKK. I'm not surprised at the cops who protect the wealthiest people in the world who likes to oppress us. I'm not surprised. Think this has this. been every, this has been our life. Like, I'm not surprised. Think, think about this, right? Yo, 9-11 hit. It changed the entire way we travel. Since 2001, if I'm not, correct me if I'm wrong, since 2001, when 9-11 when hit in, in 01, we have never flew the same, we never traveled the same since then. So you mean to tell me you care that much about your country, but you don't care about that much about us as a people. So it's like, and it's not even, it's nothing, I'm not even a political person. I haven't written none of this down. I haven't studied none of this, but it's so frustrating because yo, they changed the entire way we traveled because of 9-11. Let's not even talk about, we always sending, we deploying troops every fucking day that's tearing down these third world countries. We don't see no footage about that. We don't see no, it ain't no covers on that shit, but they changed the way we fucking travel for a lifetime because of, because of a terrorist attack. So you mean to tell me it's terrorists killing us every fucking day that's getting off on it and you can't do something to make this shit better? Everybody got so many answers, but the shit is still happening. We, we, we decided to, yo, you know what? Okay, let's get a cop's body cams. We got body cams and they still doing shit on camera and niggas are still getting, hey, Alex, if you can pull up, um, how many cops have been not charged in killing uh, African American person in a line of duty or a cop. You get what I'm saying? You can pull that up. See how many people who got off on that. Because I feel like it's still been some. It wasn't just Rodney King, now George. It it's been a couple people that got off. It's been niggas that shot niggas in their back for nothing. It's been niggas that, like, and I don't want to, I don't know the exact names, but it's been like, and I, I apologize for that. If they didn't kill 12 year olds, they didn't kill people with their families. Like, they didn't kill people like, we, we talk about a we talk about a country um that had the right to bear arms. It's they didn't kill the guy that told the officer I have I have a gun. I'm I'm letting you know I have a gun. While his wife or his girlfriend is recording, he was shot to death. It's niggas that's been got police called on because they selling cigarettes. This nigga ain't out there begging for no money. He's selling loose cigarettes for a hustle. Got choked to death. The nigga said he so, couldn't leave. Like what the fuck, son? So since 2005, uh, Jay, for that only research shows, I don't know how many shootings there have been, but only 35 officers have been convicted of a crime related to an on-duty fatal shooting. Only 35 since 2005. So when you... I feel like that's still a lot. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? Like it's like 35. Like y'all got convicted. That means y'all doing it way more times than that. If uh, how many got black? That's that. That means this. That's 35. Is that much of the ones that actually got away with it? My nigga, in M- Minneapolis alone, it's been a hundred and what ninety? Uh, correct me, y'all, because I don't know. One hundred and ninety-three. That's only in Minneapolis. Yeah. That's only there. So I just feel like. I mean, I just feel like, you know, and to in- me, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Monica. And to insert, y'all, I was speaking with a D.C. police officer yesterday, and, you know, departments know about other departments. So basically, he was telling me, like, they've been sweeping stuff under the rug with this Minneapolis police department for a really long time. So it was bound to hit the fan, basically. So it was bound. Like, that's what I, I said. I, I said, so y'all, basically, you telling me it was bound to hit the fan? He said, yeah, like, it was bound to hit the fan. And they were black police officers in D.C. I just feel like... So, like, can I, you know, really, through this all, like, I've been, you know, kind of quiet within the conversation. I think, Reese, more so my frustration isn't just with the, um, you know, George Floyd, but, like, just talking about in 2020, we not even a month ago, we're talking about Ahmaud Aubrey, where we saw uh, another black man publicly lynched, but on this time by, by civilians, you know what I'm saying? Like two people that, that felt ex-police within themselves officer. that they had an ex-police officer and his son that had the, the authority to chase this man down while he was jogging and kill him in plain day, played, uh, and recorded at the same time. And then you, you follow that and that's coupled with Breonna Taylor who was in her house and a situation went down in her house, her house where they, they were looking for someone who allegedly didn't even live at the house at the time, within, wasn't a, the, near that address. And she gets shot eight times. And to add insult to injury, she is an EMT during the time of coronavirus where we are praising frontline workers or we're praising frontline workers because now news is coming out. There was a, a, a report of a nurse that, that was trying to help somebody that was shot with a rubber bullet and ended up getting shot in a crossfire. So within a week, this was literally a week ago, we were praising people for coronavirus. So all of these things that are happening and coupled together, it's just really frustrating that we have to, the first thing out of coronavirus, they just eased the restrictions and slightly. The first thing that we have to deal with is the public on Memorial Day, the public lynching, because that's what it is. We can't sugarcoat it any longer for for and to, to be politically correct and to make people feel comfortable because that's what we're seeing is public lynching of African Americans. We've been seeing it. And the thing that social media, these things have been happening forever. But right now with social media, we have no choice but to address it because it's there. It's in the ether. It's archived. We can go back since Trayvon Martin and seeing how it's gotten worse. So that's why and add on to what you all were talking about in regards to the riots. I can't tell anybody how to protest. I can't tell anybody what, what is the right or wrong thing to do right now? Because people are frustrated. People are upset. People are hurt. People just want to be hurt. And we want to feel like human beings. Is that too much to ask? And I think that's the frustrating thing. Like, why do I have to ask to be treated like a human being? You know why? Because they fucking, bro, we don't understand. People don't realize that they, they fought for us to be three-fifths of a man, as if that was fair. Like, yeah, they, like, like they contemplated that. That wasn't like, okay, cool, we're gonna call them. No, it was like, um, it's fair to call them at least three fifths of a man, as if that was some type of, like, decent or or some type of favor or generosity. Like, my nigga, what? Like, yo, it, the thing about it, because I don't even. It's frustrating to me because I never really get into these type of bags. Like, I'm a, you know, is what it is type of person. Like, for the most part, I think life is life and shit just happens. But yo, this is disgusting, bro. I never felt like this ever in life, bro, ever. I feel like, you know, when I, like, I've been thinking about it, like, more and more, like, you know, I don't want to cross out the fact that, like, Black people as a whole, they don't like us in other countries either. It's not just America. Like, the, the racism is far past just America. Like, in other countries, we're treated worse like you know what I mean and it's just what it is like they don't like us and I personally have come to a determination that I feel like racism is a mental illness um I think that it's been practiced for so long that people don't even realize that they're like you're ill like that's not 
a proper weight of thinking. Like, you know, it's inhumane almost to even think this way. And I think that a lot of this, again, like you said, it's nothing new, but again, we are stepping into newer generations of kids that did not get taught about the history that we all know. So they're coming now and they're like, what the fuck? Like, you know, what do you mean we're, we're treated three fifths of a man? Like, what do you mean? And I do have a lot of hope in the next generation because we, some of us are even only aware to a certain degree. Then there's people who actually had to live it. And then there's people whose parents have to live it in, in, in different ways. And then you have the generations that are coming up under us that only know it to a certain degree because they're not teaching it in school and the parents are getting younger and younger. So they do not have the same knowledge about history that some of us or some people even have. So I do feel like right now we're only at a start. I do think this is going to get worse before it gets better. Um, only because the you got to remember, I'm 29, Jay, you're 29 this year, you know, a couple of y'all are a little younger than us, but there's 24, 25, 20, you know, 22, 21, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15 year olds that do not understand us at all. They don't understand why we're getting killed by cops. They don't understand why they don't like us. Then these same questions you have that you actually had to live through for generations at this point, they have no idea. So I have a lot of faith in the younger generation because we are, I seen on the news, another young man from around our age said the same thing. Like we're like that bridge. We're not quite our ancestors, but we're also not the generation beneath us who doesn't know much about it. We're that bridge to continuously show them that this ain't right. This is not fair. It's not, again, this is not, I'm trying to figure out the right words I want to use. Again, I say things like, when I say things like, I'm not surprised, it's not because I'm taking it, I'm not taking it lightly, but I got grandparents and ancestors who already got their hands chopped off and that we done lived and thrived through still, you know what I'm saying? So I'm very much still broken, but blessed, you get what I'm saying? And that's just a message that I think that a lot of people need to also realize, this is not nothing new and the system is broken but our generations to come are blessed because these seeds that were planted in these roots are getting cut. They're getting cut up. This is, I actually, I actually, like I said, I'm not a writer, but I actually, I hope it, it, sometimes things need to crumble before it's fixed. Sometimes this has to be so loud that people cannot ignore it. And I feel like even when I'm watching on the news, these kids out there are young. God bless them. I hope they're safe. But I'm happy they're there. I'm happy they're there. And I thank them for being there because again, without the noise, it's gonna be quiet. Now, I do think there's still other ways that it needs to be time to take serious outside of writing that people are not talking about. Or if they're talking about it, people are just not doing it because social media is filled with, you know, with so much nonsense, it's blinded of a way of life to change these ways of thinking. Um, so, um, yeah, I wanted to, you said something that, that really was profound and I wanted to add on to the conversation. I wanted to see your opinion, your opinions on this. Um, when you said the bridge, right? Um, the importance we, we, we've been seeing throughout the in the midst of all of this unrest and everybody protesting that Donald Trump has been very active on Twitter and it's very it's vocal. Terrible. He's, he's, he's been very vocal. Gone. And one of the biggest things that I've heard you say in regards to being the bridge is we understand and we've seen what our ancestors and our, our predecessors had to do in the importance of voting. We, 1965 Voting Act, we, we saw how profound that is. We still have an idea, though we weren't there, we were years removed, but we had our grandparents right. and our parents that were there that right. could tell us how profound it is. How important do you all feel that it is to, to really move that idea and keep that idea transcendent to the generation that's beneath us? Because I do see that certain people feel like our vote doesn't matter or we, it, why do we have to choose the lesser of two evils or the reconstruction? What, do you, what are your takes on the voting aspect of activism in that regard? Yo. Oh, oh go ahead, Jay. I might sound ignorant, but yo, all this shit is nonsense. Still vote. You know what I'm saying? Still vote for your your um your local parties. Vote because that's just Congress. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We gotta vote because we have a voice. You know what I'm saying? 
But I'm not about to sit up here and act like I think that's the end all be all because we had a black president. Black people were still getting killed by fucking police and white people. Like it ain't like it's changing shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I personally think, and again, I don't, I'm not a conspiracy theorist or nothing. I never even push the agenda of everything all black, but I'm all I'm I'm this close to saying, yo, fuck it, let's just go back to segregation because if we have each other, yeah, I'm not saying that black people don't kill black people. I'm not saying that. But god damn, like I don't like I don't know. It's it's kind of like I don't want either one to happen, but it's like, damn, I'd rather us have beef with each other than have beef with another motherfucker trying to take us off because of some because like take us out because of some some alternative motive or interior interior motive like i just like i just feel like it's bullshit so to answer your question yeah we gotta vote because we can do it and in the times where we couldn't and our ancestors fought and our our generation before us fought for us to have the right to vote to have the right to have a voice so i think we should definitely vote because it's important but do i do i wholeheartedly right now believe that that's changing shit i don't think it's changing a fucking thing because the shit is still bullshit like even think about this and I never been a conspiracy theorist, but it's crazy that the coronavirus hit, and now this happened. Speak, Jay. And, and the last time, the last time something like this happened, of course, it was riding. And when riots happen, it's mostly us out there fighting on the front lines. So if all of us are in one place, what the fuck is going to happen? Yeah. Like so, it's like the, it's a setup. Yo. So- what I want to also touch base on, because, like, you know, even with the riots happening, I, um, you know, a lot of the research have proven it's not even the black people who's fucking shit up. It's actually the white people. Um, mm-hmm. It's been on camera numerous amount of times. Um, there's white people letting people know it's not the black people, it's the white people. The black people are also frustrated because the white people aren't doing it, and we're the ones who's going to get the blame for it. It's not just the black people who's out here rioting at all. It's white people who are fucking shit up and they do not have to sit here and live in the standards to when it's playing cleanup. They get to go back to their suburban homes and they get to go back to their communities that are always gonna be able to be rebuilt effortlessly and they don't have to deal with it. Um, And I think it's very unfortunate that, you know, that's happening because, you know, like, we were just talking about this last night. Like, when I'm watching all of the protests, it's way more white people out there than usual. And you know, not being a conspiracy theorist, you know, there's also a lot of damage that's going on across the nation. And, you know, yeah, we all stand black, but at the same time, like, what are y'all doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? How are white people fucking shit up like this and nobody's saying anything? How are they just getting by just doing these things and nobody's saying anything? And then you see on the news, these thugs, these, 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 you know, these looters, these, but, First of all, it's y'all people. It's y'all people out here. It's, it's not. It's, it's not just us. Like it's y'all people out here. I'm like not- the privilege is there. I, I don't like the notion that like, like even like just being annoyed by it. Like what makes me annoyed by that whole stance is like you know I watched a clip yesterday and I was gonna ha- try to pull it up but it was a little too long and I didn't want to um have to make Jay have to chop this up too much. But like it's a difference of how they view when the white people are writing and how they view when the black people are writing. When the black people are writing, we're thugs, we're all of this. When the white people are writing, they're just college kids that are upset. Like and, and, and I was about to go into that. I was gonna say, yo, I might I know I might sound angry and like I condone violence, but I don't condone violence, however, Yo, if y'all wanna fuck some shit up, fuck CNN cameras up. You get what I'm saying? Because they the ones that's painting this bullshit ass picture. You wanna fuck, don't fuck your community up. Fuck the people, fuck, the, fuck up the people that's, that's really putting us in a negative light. Fuck up the people that's doing damage to us. CNN, like you said, like I was about to go on that before you even brought up the example. They're talking about we're thugs, we're this. No, bitch, what the fuck you think we're gonna do? Like, my niggas, we, we have to watch ourselves get killed every fucking day. Like, we, like I was, man, we talking about, mental illness, everybody want to be so aware and everybody want to be so fucking woke, but that, that they're not, they not woke enough to understand that this is killing us mentally. We're watching our people die every fucking day and we have to watch it over and over and over again. It's bad enough that we got to watch people killing the, our heroes like Nipsey Hussle, but now we got to watch cops killing innocent motherfuckers for no reason. And if it ain't cops, it's some white 
fucking falsely entitled pig that want to kill somebody for doing nothing. I'm tired of this shit. And like, I've never been more passionate about this. And I, I get it. We got to focus our energy in a more positive way. But how long are we going to keep telling us the same thing? Focus your energy in a positive way. Focus your energy in a different direction, my nigga. We didn't had different directions for fucking decades on decades. We didn't had different, we had positivity for decades on decades. This shit is old and it's fucking irritating as fuck. And all these social media influencers that want to sound cute and cool, talking about y'all need to stop doing this, you shut the fuck up. Because clearly you don't understand how painful this shit is. Like, do you understand how frustrating it is to have a girlfriend and a fucking stepdaughter and not know when I'm gonna have to protect my family from the fucking police? Who you call when the police is the bad guys? How are we gonna call police on the police? Do you know that I, I was arrested before and a police treated me unfairly and the cop that witnessed him treating me unfairly said he could not take the take the handcuffs off of me because once a police arrests you, that's his arrest and you can't go against that. Like, they need to change that. First of all, we're talking about voting. We need to really understand what the fucking law is so we can change the law. But this shit is pissing me the fuck off. Like, it's just irritating the shit because it's nothing we can fucking do. What can we do? Keep going to school, keep voting. My nigga, we doing that and we're still dying. We're still dying. Like, like what else? Like, what the fuck else? Like, what do people expect, my nigga? Like, this is irritating as fuck, yo. And I never, I don't even, talk, like, y'all didn't never even hear me talk about police brutality like that. That's how frustrating it is because it's like, I watched this man, I watched this video so many times, bro. And like Alex said right before that, it was um Ahmaud Aubrey. Like, and it's like, oh my fucking God, we're watching our. We're watching people die. You know what I'm saying? We're watching people die every day and we're supposed to be okay with it. That's why we can't, that's why we de desensitize. That's why we, we, we don't have any hearts. That's why we can't cry because we're seeing it all the time and it's becoming the norm. Whereas though, we have movies of just going back to the hood of you want to see a dead body if, is this, as, as if that's cool. Because we're seeing this so much that it's normal. I don't want this shit to be normal for my children. I don't want this shit to be normal for my loved ones because this being normal for the people that I love, that, that means I can't get the, the true genuine love from them because they don't know how to fucking love because they only, they only showed hatred. This shit is whack. Like, this shit is whack. I don't even know what to fucking say about it. This shit is irritating and it's frustrating as shit, period. So this shit is making me mad. Nah, you just dropped facts, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Alex. Nah, go ahead. No, I was, I'm quiet this whole time, though, because I ain't going to lie. I'm kind of fired up like how Jay feel. Like, when it comes to this. Nah, I, I feel it. For me, <laughs> I get so emotional. And I think for me, it's because I also lost a lot of people to just, like, gun violence, police brutality, just the streets, just different stuff like that. And it's just like, yo, it's fucked up all the way around. So it's like, I definitely agree with everything y'all saying. I just wanted to add, it, add that in. Cause literally, if I go in, I'm about to be sounding just like Jay. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to say, you know, it's definitely something we had to pay attention to and figure out what are we doing ourselves. I feel like it's easy to talk about what we can do as a whole and as a masses, like what the government is doing, what white people are doing. But what are we doing in our own households? What are we doing in our own communities? Mm -hmm. that's difference and I think that's something we need to really think about because I myself I can talk about the topic all day and I can talk about how it frustrates the shit out of me but when I really think about like all right Jewel, what you really doing that's that's taking a step forward in a positive way that's really making a difference and I saying that I'm not at all but I've been trying to be more intentional about that because it seems like it's just getting worse and worse and when you think about coronavirus and then now you know this happens and then now we're looting and rioting and it's just like Signs of the times or something. Like, it's just like the world is just getting crazier and crazier. And that's, and that's just, I guess, you know, it's, you know, I just had to, you know, pull it together because I was about to fight by my own damn tears. But, you know, what frustrates me is just trying 
to get other people to understand that we are at the ends of times and It's really rough, Shade. And I, I feel how you feel, sis. I really do, because it's like... No, we do. It's like, people who don't like understand... Trying to say, you know? like, yo, this... It's a spiritual warfare going on. It's a spiritual warfare. Like, and I'm, it's so hard to, like, hear the frustration, because it's just like, I just be... Like, I, like I, I can't make everybody, like, believe in faith and pray and and it's like it really like breaks you down because it's just like yo we only have one thing that's going to save this like no it's not the cops no it's not you know like no matter what we look at like if we even look at the year kobe died in a, a airplane crash Pop smoke gets robbed. Coronavirus is killing our grandparents. Cops is killing us. Like, if you're black, you're under attack. Like, I'm trying, like, people don't understand. We have only one source, bro. Like, get you, and when just going to Jules' question, when it goes, when it really boils down to it, you get yourself right with God. You get yourself right with yourself. You get yourself right with your family. You get yourself right for your you and yours. Because at the end of the day, we don't have that. We don't have that luxury. We don't have uh, uh, fucking people protecting our buildings. We don't have people protecting us. We don't have that. Like right now, it just makes me sick just to even think what's going on and what's going on under what's going on. How easy it is for just last just last couple months last year it was child trafficking at an all-time high right like just imagine how out of all-time high it is right now because everything's distracted just imagine how many people are in the home still dealing with domestic violence still suicidal thoughts it's not it's every it the world is at an all-time high on just it's time for a change like and it's just really like what change do you want to make like where do you want to like if I die, I want to be correct with myself. I want my family to know I love them. I want my friends to know I tried everything to be a good friend. I want everything to be aligned because I cannot call it. I cannot say, I cannot call those things. You know what I'm saying? It's like, just. Yo, I think, um, Jewel, you brought up a, a great point and I wanted to like go into that and not just pass it over, right? Um, what are we doing? What do we think we're doing individually, individually to make this a better, and not to make this a better place, not even just uh, because of George Floyd, but period. Like, what was your, what was your question to yourself exactly, uh, Jewel? Like, to go back and it, it's just like, what are we doing? Like, because I said, it's easy for us to think about what we're doing as a masses, what the government is doing, all those different things. But what are we doing in our own minds, in our own families, in our own households, right? In our own communities. I feel like when I think about the overall situation for myself, Am I, and I and I ask myself these questions because I believe that it's a spiritual warfare and I pray and I go to church and I do certain things, but I'm distracted. And I feel like us as a generation, we're so quick to forget. So like what I was saying with that question is like, what are we doing? Not even just what are we doing, but what are we consistently doing that's going to make a difference? Because we're so easily distracted. Like Sade just said, with the sex trafficking, the child trafficking, and all of these different things. Everybody's uproaring and rioting right now about the looting and stuff the same way they did with Freddie Gray got killed, right? Right here in our own city. And then time go by, we quick to forget. And here we are again. So my question was just really like, what are we really doing that's making a difference? Because clearly busting into the Louis Vuitton store and stealing a bunch of Louis Vuitton purses ain't it. And you know, fussing back and forth with the police officers. I seen the video, lady smacking the police, the police smacked her. It was just it was just like craziness. And it's like, I don't know if I want to be more like Martin and Malcolm at this point, but it's just like, what are we doing? And what are our I own strategies? What what I think it's and I wanted to ask that question for all what of you. What you say? What was it? I said, what, what are we doing individually? Are we? What are, are we doing? What are we doing? Like individually, like, like, yeah, like individually. Like I, you know, for myself, like, you know, like, like I said, like, for me, like, my biggest thing is, like, 
you know, my ancestors didn't live a lot of happy times. My, my family didn't live a lot of happy times. Like, again, my biggest thing is to get right with myself and to always stay proper with God. And whether that looks like a patience thing, it's everything is not an overnight thing. And I think that's where everybody got to understand that when you are systematically incorrect for hundreds of hundreds of years, it takes hundreds and hundreds of more years to undo all of what has been done. So the first thing I have, like I'm working on with myself is continuously breaking the own generational curses in my own damn house, with my own damn child, on my own damn heart, on my own damn self, just so that I could be spiritually immensely prepared to channel everything that I need to change channel to continuously make changes that educate me on doing different things. Um, other things, like I said, you know, ownership, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't think a lot of my, nobody in my family really owned a house. Like, you know, a lot of them didn't really have land. You know, those are the things that's in line is get my stuff together to do that. Uh, I've been doing some research, you know, right now, now I'm about to switch my credit union. I got to go with a black bank. I'm sorry, because the more business we give black banks is the more money they have to loan us and to do the things that we need to do on business ventures and home ownership and everything we need to do. Like we had the, the biggest thing for me that like, is like I said this before, is like I'm really trying to transition into circulating into only the black dollar because if we do do the black dollar, it is very easily to be segregated when we don't need their money. When you need a car, that's not your, that's not black owned money. You have to loan from a dealer that is white owned. Like when we need things, we have to go back to them. That's why it's not separated. It can't be segregated because half the things that run in this country is not based off of our dollar. Like right now, like the biggest thing is like, I literally said to myself, I said, when I get home, I got to go now go to a black credit union. I love my credit union. I never had any issues. You know what I'm saying? But I have to give my money somewhere where it's going to benefit me or my grandchildren or somebody later. I can't sit here and say like, I'm doing all I can. And I keep investing into people who are not investing back into us. You know what I mean? Like, you know, and to add to that real quick, Sade, not even just the banks and the credit unions, but that, let's think about what we spend our money on when we're shopping, right. these designs, mm -hmm. yes. and, you know, all this stuff was like, yeah, I might got a Birkin bag, but is this doing anything for my people? Uh, and I literally just said to myself, like, like I wrote it last night. I was like, you know, they saying that July 7th is like black eye day. Don't give, you know, white corporations the money because the corporations do fund the government. But I said, let's start now. I made it in a mental note in my mind. I said, look, as much as little as I can to make that transition to completely excel. Because of course, like, you know, even the food, like shit, Panera, like whatever we eat is, you know, unfortunately, this is what the reality is. So I said, as much as it takes, try your best to not shop these corporations and go black owned, bro. Go black oh, owned. Mm -hmm. Go black and restaurant. Go black grocery. You know what I'm saying? Like, but yeah. that's just the thing. It's not the easiest thing to do. I know people want to say, like, I'm completely shopping. You can't because, unfortunately, that's the reason why we're like this now. Because right now, we don't have much. We yeah. don't have a much of a leg to stand on. So it's like, when do we start? Like, when do we start? You know what I'm saying? So I can't make a masses do it, but I can do it and I can share my testimony by doing yeah. it. And the one thing we only have is our voice and who we impact, but each one teach one. If I even show one person, I did my job. We mm -hmm. cannot change everything. Like we cannot sit here and think like, oh, like, you know, like, boom. And when I say this, a whole no, as long as you taught one person, you did what you're here. Everybody has a role yeah. on this earth. Everybody has a role to play. That's why you have to get right with yourself get right with your God and do what you need to do to be the best person you have to be ultimately because you're showing somebody else how to do it too. So whatever yeah. I can do is I cannot make everybody do it, but I can show you that, look, I'm it doing, works. It works mm -hmm. for me. So it could work for you. Like, you know what I mean? And it's also not an overnight thing. Like, again, this has been hundreds of hundreds of hundreds of years. I'm not just talking about our own twenties, thirties of years. I'm talking about hundreds of years before us that put us here. It's going to take a lot to unbreak these transitions. So we only can do what we can as long as we're doing something. Mm -hmm. I got a list um, of um, a few suggestions. All right, so y'all already said some of these. Um, number one is all families get an LLC. Get a business for your family. Physical and weapons training, stack your money, strategize quietly, Overlove your family, invest in dangerous books and people, and tunnel vision and focus. Because, like, that's like, and that's just where I like, I guess, like, you know, I think, like, you know, like, even through this process, I think, 
you know, people like were talking to me like on my story because I'd post about whatever. But I think my lax energy confuses people. And I think that people understand like just because we're not yelling and just because like th those tears, those has been probably bottled up all week from having to monitor what I'm looking at, continuously needing to know what's going on and also taking in everything going on. But it's also the understanding that, yo, if we all move godlike we all can move the world but if we're not all marrying a higher self of just doing things out of like what irritates me is that people are weeping but they're not worshiping mm -hmm. that shit irritates me i'm sorry because where are you asking for your help from and show that to everybody we got to unlearn a lot of things. Like one thing I've learned when I took my African diaspora, class, no, excuse me, African diaspora class at Morgan was just a lot of the systematic structural ways we think that stuff that's embedded in us. It's just, we can't help it, right? Like we just, it's, it's just what we do. We just can't help it. So I think the start, one, being spiritually aligned, having a good prayer life, a good relationship with God, being all the way faithed up and all of everything Monique just listed. But unlearning a lot of things and i'm even speaking to myself when i say that because it's just like i'm so used to certain things and then it's like now that i'm trying to be more intentional i catch myself sometimes like oh wait all right i know you like that designer bag but do you really need that is that really doing something good or you know like or is it just something you think you want because you think it's gonna make you look like you pop it but pop it for who because who really is watching you know like it's right. like we have to retrain our brain right and it's a process and that's all i keep saying like and I think, like, you know, like, and that's why I say, like, I think people just need, like, even with social media, I said it last night, you have to take it in moderation because a lot of things they're not showing is they're not showing the cops in Seattle that's actually standing with the rioters. They're not showing that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That at the end of the day, we have a fucking lot of evil, crooked people, but we have some great people out here too. It's kind of unfair to only shine light on that because there are people trying to help us. You know what I'm saying? And if we could just stick together, you know what I mean? And understand that better is to come, bro. Like, I know it seems hopeless. I know it hurts, but better is to come. And that's why I say we cannot be hurt and keep hurting other things and other people in the process because it's setting us back farther and farther. We have to train, like, like keep reprogramming the brain to say this is done but what can I do in a positive way to make an impact in a way that is going to be beneficial to my people and not hurt us? If I go to jail right now, that's not, I can't, I don't have a voice to come share with my people. If I die today, I don't have a voice to come share with my people. Like, like we have to do better. Like, and, and it just is what it is. And like, I know it's not our fault. It's not our fault, but that's exactly why we have to work 10 times harder. Unfortunately, I, I don't know if you ever heard of saying this, like, you know, it, 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 it takes 10 times better, 10 times more work to be a better person than an evil person, like, or a bad person or somebody who doesn't care, is careless. It takes 10 times more of the effort to come out on top. Like, it just does. Like, you know, and something that, it's just so much, like, it's, it's, just, it's just a really um, emotional thing, like, you know, like, and it's a lot to process. We're only day six in a protest. Um, and it's just like, you know, it's not like people, it's time to, it's, it's also time to detox. Like social media is not helping. Like, as, like you said, like we keep seeing our people dying and dying over and again. We're seeing our people in the street getting trampled over, ran over by cars. Nobody's getting held accountable. It's time to detox. Get some prayer going, sit down with your family, talk about love and just how to build inward real quick because there's some people that's hurting and nobody knows and they're right in the same house, but we're looking at the computer screen, following you know, what's going on on social media and CNN every second. But right now, we're struggling, bro. It's time to turn the TVs off for a second. I'm sorry. It's not going to help. This is not this. It's hurt. It hurts. You know what I'm saying? It's time to detox for a second. Sit with your family. Love on them overly. Love on them, like Monique said. And, and, and find a practice. Let's find a practice in this home. Because we have, to, we, have to, we have to find some peace so we can elevate. Because there's still little kids out here. It's still 12-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 9-year-olds that need to figure out when they're 22 and 23 and this happens again, how can they move forward? How is that? Because if this is not, say nothing happens from this, right? Our kids are going to relive the same thing. How do we tell them to get out of this? 
how do we tell them move forward? How do we tell them like, look, it might happen again, but this is what you're going to need in the, the end word, you know, positivity you're going to need to carry to help your friend who might've lost their brother to this, but you didn't. And I know it hurts you too, but they did. You want to need to have the stamina to be able to talk to them, to get them through. We have to overly love on our family so that we can teach our generation. If this does not change how to cope, how to be mentally strong, like, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, yeah, as far as that shit, man, I feel like we all got answers. We don't really know which one or which ones are correct. Uh, I think we all should, like, you know. Do what you, do, do what you know to do until you learn better. Right, yep. Um, you know say a prayer or something? I know Shawty always lead nothing prayer. I'm just saying. Should we say a prayer for our community, for, you know, what's going on, or what y'all think? Um, sure, I got y'all. Y'all ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, mm. God. We just need you. We need your comfort. We need your peace. We need your strength. We need your wisdom. We need your guidance. We don't have the answers, but we ask that you move through us, move through our minds, move through our tongues, move through our feet as we do your work, God, because we know you do no wrong. This is your will. We ask that you continuously bless those who are hurting and mourning those that they have lost. We ask that you change the world, God. And however long you need that to take it is on your time, God, but we ask that we trust you through the process. We ask that you lead us in a way of righteousness and not towards the evil that daunts us each day. We continue to ask you for guidance, God, because we don't know what to do and we're lost without you, but we ask that you stay with us each and every step. In Jesus' name, amen. we pray, amen. Amen. Sorry, guys, I have a long prayer today because I'm just... No, no. Oh, wow. This was an emotional podcast. I ain't never been on here like this. I mean, I knew it, was it, 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 it had it had to be it, it because yeah. we we this is real and this is a yeah. reality and it's sad that it is a reality and it's sad that again we have to keep having this conversation, but we we can't not have it. We can't not have it because that saying goes, all it takes for evil to progress in this world is an absence of good. But evil gonna be evil, evil gonna do what evil gonna do. But if there's an absence, it's just gonna be total chaos. So we have to keep having these conversations and it's unfortunate and it's frustrating and it's tiring. But we also have to protest. We also have to do the, all everything that you're seeing that's happening is necessary because I haven't seen anything happen or any change that's come from something not radical and what we're seeing right now as as it's it's though done before at this level i don't know i'm just praying that something really good does come over this like in all like the segregation all of the ideas that we put out that's 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 the hope and then that prayer i felt it you felt the emotion the passion but as a people right now and i didn't even get to the, the, the to answer your question jay like what am i doing to be positive loving myself bro like I'm really learning to love my, it, and it took a while, bro. I didn't know this. Like I didn't ask to be black, but I was blessed, bro. And it took me a while to realize that. And I feel like there's a lot of us that don't know. Like we don't understand how blessed this melanin is. I take it to be a for that much hate. Got it. Aside from somebody that has some that much hate for me, I gotta it's be special. something. Yeah, yeah. I have it's to be special. Facts. There has to be something in me that. That is showing that that you can't hate. It's envy to a degree. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. I had to Yo, realize that. Outside. I had to realize that potential and that greatness within myself, and that's what I've been trying to do throughout it all. That is awesome educate myself. Point. Educate because, and it's sad though, man. It's sad that I had to, that that it takes all of this. I mean, that we're, again we're having this conversation, but that's what loving on myself, loving on my family, loving on my niece. For example, she's going to college. She could have been a statistic. 
her father was locked up for most of her life, man. But she did it. She graduated despite the obstacles and everything. And because she had love, man. And, and that's what I saw in her situation. And it, yeah. it, it motivated me to keep on going. And it's, I'm, I am going to motivate me to keep on going moving forward. But that's 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 the biggest thing. We have to love ourselves, man, and, and we have to love ourselves in this community. We have to love our brothers. And and that's what I've been trying to like. You know, I just want I'm I'm trying to convey like it. The reason why I have faith so high is because, of, like we said, we've seen, like we've had 400 years of slavery. We still black people thriving at a higher rate than we ever have ever. Like you know what I mean? Like, and at the end of the day, this is not going to change that. It's not going to change that. It's going to be hard to deal with and it's going to be hard to get through. And we might accumulate more traumas along the way, but as long as we're learning to love we ourselves, we'll heal from it and we'll still be rising at an alarming rate, even higher. You know what I'm saying? You can't destroy what you can't distract. And to add on to what Alex just said, how like they hate us so much, like it has to be something about us. Like just think about this, like we go outside because we need sun. Okay. Like the give Love me outside. sun. Listening. They gotta go to tan. They have to go to tan and get something chemically sprayed on them. We go outside and we out we can we can go a shade darker if we outside for a little too long. That's magic. Right. Like, look, you know, somebody made a point too that you know uh something that's been sticking with me the last couple of days of how you know they put so much emphasis on you know black people been thug and violent and criminals but they've been birthed through violence and criminal like they've been birthed that way like their grandparents 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 like they like this is who they are like you know what i mean it's the ultimate projection like you know what i mean we are not these people we couldn't be we were oppressed so long that all we had was empathy and pain it was you guys that were installing violence criminal acts Tamika maori said we learned it from them we learned, we learned it from all you. the violence from them we learned it from yes. you so you know just sit on that okay You know, and um, just as for, you know, our people, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, I don't like this being an area of opportunity for those who want to get out here and do stupid shit. Like, I don't like, you know, us getting out here and affecting each other because it's just a time, like, you guys got to understand, like, yeah, you know, racism peak this week however we don't have any more coronavirus updates we haven't heard of any killings going on we haven't heard of any robberies any you know what i mean but it's happening it's still happening very much killings are still going as normal as it's planned rape is still going as normal as planned like these things have not stopped so this ain't the time like the, the time it, get let's get together okay i don't know it's it's done like we have bigger things to worry about. We need to get our foundation right so we could get our country right. We we can't be at war in the street and be at war at home. Like it doesn't make sense. It doesn't help. So, you know, and for all those who have been, you know, destroying other black businesses, you know, robbing them, you know, um, one thing I will want to say is, you know, I understand that unemployment is at a higher rate than normal right now. A lot of people are still waiting on unemployment, still waiting on stimulus checks, and work is done right now. Um, but this ain't robbing your people ain't the way. So uh, yeah, and I um I was thinking about that too. Um, I just seen that 40, 40 million? 40 million. Some yeah, forty million people just like have filed for unemployment, right? Put this in perspective. We just had the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. So nobody was working. So nobody has any funds coming to them unless you're a business owner or you work for one of those essential corporations. Mm -hmm. 
what like what what's going what's going to happen like what if they don't give out these checks like mm-hmm. and that's and that's the thing like what if they don't give out these checks then people don't have no money yeah. um people people going into grocery stores and doing all that it's no food so like we got to do stuff like grow our own food now like it's it's about to so, get to a point where we really have to start doing our own things to add to add to that which is something that I kind of been thinking about, which is interesting in regards to this whole George Floyd thing. The police were called because George Floyd allegedly presented the counterfeit $20 bill uh, at a grocery store, correct? Uh, or at a store. And then police were called in that regard. And it's interesting that you just mentioned that unemployment, because when I think about it, he would have never had to do that if there's if there were structures in place where he clearly lost his job. He was a bouncer. And there was another report, allegedly, I, I can't confirm this, that the officer knew him, that they were both bouncers at the same club. This is, yes, this is a they were. That I've also heard. Um, the lady, um, I saw an this, interview about the lady, uh, the lady who owned the restaurant. Yeah, they worked together. So it's unfortunate when we sit and we think about the fact that if there were structures in place that he didn't, he would have never been in that position if he had the fun. And that was coming off the coronavirus where we saw a government that was clearly not prepared and as a result at the end the person that ends up on the short end of the stick is the black man at the at the as it trickles down because it all started from that and it trickles down because i might have lost a word i honestly i don't even know what to say you know i think um i think we all are frustrated about it uh all we can do is just pray and you know, like uh, we watch we, we watch church today, and all we can do is pray. Even in a, even in our lowest our lowest situation, lowest circumstances, we gotta thank God for giving it to us and also taking it away from us, right? And that's just everything. We also gotta we gotta be patient. You know what I'm saying? Because in the end, it all it all figures itself out. We don't know the answers to it, but in the end. We get all figures out so 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 like for everybody that's out there rock uh looting and rioting, I'm gonna just say what I said in the beginning. Protect your family, protect yourself, and protect your home because if you harm yourself, if you bring harm to your own home, then you don't give it a chance to get better because you don't know. You gotta be patient and give it a chance to get better. You know what I'm saying? Um and that's just something that I saw from church today. And it wasn't like it wasn't broken down verbatim like that. And it was more so of uh, depression and people that feel like they want to kill themselves and being patient in that way. But I, I just wanted to, to kind of compare it in the same, the same aspect because it's kind of like depression as well. You get so frustrated that you want to get out and hurt somebody, but you don't give you, yourself enough time to be patient for it to fix itself almost. Like, honestly, even if you get hurt, you get a scab, the scab goes away essentially by itself. If you put something on it or not, it would eventually go away, it eventually heals. So this is just something that's been going on and on and on. And I don't want my frustration to get confused with uh, giving up. And I don't want nobody else to feel like there's nothing that they, they can do and they have to give up. So I just wanted to just put that on the table. But it's also okay to release in that way. Like, you know what I mean? Like feeling this is absolutely normal. Like don't suppress it, let it out, cry it out, talk to your friends, you know, stay, stay stay aware of how you're feeling because it's absolutely okay we, we like we deserve to feel this way that's how i don't feel i don't feel the way that people are outside doing what they're doing because how do you how do you expect us to feel right now like i once heard um i once heard a white person say um i don't understand like how uh white people feel as though like they have the right to do certain things because it's like y'all brought them over here and made them build this whole country and you just think that like you're still gonna treat them like that and they're not gonna wanna blow this joint up. Like they're not gonna wanna take this, like they're not gonna do that. I have something else to say too, now that I think about it since before we get up out of here whenever we do. You know what's irritating? Uh, me and my girl just had this conversation of like, I don't it's it's two things, right? I don't like the necessity of people having to relay like i mean i'm not racist like Mm -hmm. i fucking hate it like and the reason why is because 
you don't have to be not racist. If you're not anti-racist, it really doesn't matter. I need people to be anti-racist. It doesn't matter if you're not racist, you need to be against anyone who is racist because at the end of the day, it's just inhumane. The second thing is I'm tired of seeing, you know, I understand that black people as a whole is tired, but what I don't like is black people apologizing for us being black and then bothering somebody. We are not going to apologize for our existence. That's what we're not going to do. I've seen a lot of posts is like, I'm sorry, I'm black. I'm sorry that I intimidate you. I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry. sorry. I'm not fucking sorry. I'm not I'm sorry. sorry you feel I'm sorry. And black people <laughs> do not need to be sorry because people cannot handle what God's given blessed hands has made. No, we're not sorry for wearing hoods to stores. No, we're not sorry about living in the hood. No, we're not sorry of, no, we're not fucking sorry. We're, we're not. not. Sorry that our dick is bigger than yours. We're not sorry that our woman has to <laughs> Straight like that. Yours. We're not sorry for none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, not sorry. My girlfriend lifts you better than your girlfriend. Lives. Don't be upset at me. Don't be upset at hmm. me. My girlfriend has fatter than hmm. your girlfriend has. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Hey, enough. We're not I'm sorry. Gonna crack. When she gets 40, I'm sorry about that. I'm not sorry. About okay. That. okay. Okay, we're not sorry, and we don't need to be, you know, and Black people need to understand, like, we are not going, just because they're acting like this, we're not going to apologize for our existence. No, we're not. We're not. So those are just two things that's been bothering the fuck out of me, you know, especially, you know, I, you know, I appreciate you know, my white friends are, you know, saying a little thing. Like, I get it. But once you add that, I mean, I'm not racist. Look, if you ain't anti-racist, just fuck you too. And that's straight like that. Straight like you that. either with us or you against us, period. No. So, um, where we at on time? Anybody got the time? Or are y'all? Let's go real black ass. We over an hour, though. I know we over an hour. We good? The team is good? We Everybody got anything off their chest? And another thing to say. And one more say. I can talk about this all day, bro. Okay. You all know we can talk I mean, about I this all day. I'm going to talk about it, out. and I'm going to talk about it until it's done. And, and until that's, we pass it. You know, I definitely feel better letting it out. You know, I definitely think, like, it's been tough. Like, you know, I've been talking to my girl about it. You know, I shared J with Jay how, of how I was feeling. Um, and it's, it's, it's heavy, you know, but, like, I think it's okay to talk about this. Like everybody, talk about it. You know what I mean? Um, I do want there to be a fine line if I had my way with when people are talking about it, you know, let's talk about it, but we can't dwell too long. We have to find positive action to take behind yes. it. Not dwell. Mm -hmm. Dwelling is not, you know, we don't dwell. You know what I'm saying? Our God is too big for that. We, we take positivity and we, we figure out I wish, in which way I had a shot. We could have took a shot to the political bullshit, but I ain't got no more. Yeah, I know. But is that a smoothie? You know, <laughs> no, that's fruit punch, a Jamaican fruit punch. That's mine. Oh, <laughs> how you know this yours? Because I had two of them. I drank mine. I don't know. You did whatever. You no, did. I left mine in the fridge. That's that's <laughs> mine. But I, I bet you drank the other one. Yeah. Exactly, so that's mine. And I mix yours with mine. So we mix it. Now we having babies. What? Yo, we... Jim and I still Talk be a over. <laughs> Jay, I'm going to just say this, though. I'm going to just say that was you. That was you all the time. I'm going to just say that, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay, we'll talk about that later, because he likes to act like he don't want it. So, um, episode 27. I'll be back for 28. We back on a green child. Couch. Couch. I miss you guys. We yeah. miss you too. You in Houston having it up. Fuck out of here, man. <laughs> she definitely is, though. She on the beaches and eight days. She living lavish. Yeah, though. she was living life yesterday. Showing she the shit. lavish. <laughs> mm -hmm. I deserve the break, you know? You know, one Gemini down, two more to go. Next week is Jay's birthday, so it's going to be episode 28. Oh, oh it's a party. So cool. It would have been so cool if it was episode 29 and it was your 29th birthday. Oh, that would have been lit. Just missed I won. Damn. But look, if I, you know, yeah. But, you know, so we have a great week ahead, y'all. Oh, episode 28, we do it for Jay. That's the title. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh episode 28. <laughs> Episode 28, we do it for Jay. Jay, Jay with the J. 
<laughs> hey, turn <laughs> up. <laughs> Mark up, man. She's lit. Yo, I fucking love y'all. Also, you know, y'all take it easy. Please take social media in moderation. Say your prayers this week. Oh, yeah. yeah three books. Drink, drink a lot of water. Get your greens Any? in because you need all your brain fuel. Let's stay powered up. Um, we can still weep for our loved ones and our, our peers and our people, but we also have to stay powered up. So get your rest. Please rest. Fresh your mind. Fresh your body. Please. So if you also, if you're going out there, please be safe. If you are going yes, out there, please, please, please be, be safe. safe. Be safe. Y'all. Gang, 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 gang. And we out. It's been real. Period. Peace.